Welcome to Making the Stuart Model Steam Plant, Part 87. This episode is called Starting a Few Small But Important Jobs That Are Required to Finish the Steam Plant. And the episode starts with a bit of electricery. I need to wire the two lamps to the dynamo. And here I have two rolls of very thin electrical cable. And in case you're wondering what my Proxon motor tools are doing in the clip, as you can see, there is a roll of red cable and a roll of black cable. I need to twist these two pieces of cable around each other. And I'm going to use the Proxon motor tool for that. First of all, I find the ends of the cable and put them together. Then I unwind quite a long length of the cable from the drums. Once I have a sufficient length of the cable, I cut it to length so it's no longer wrapped around the drums. One end of the paired cables fits into the chuck of the Proxon motor tool. And very soon, at the lowest speed, I will use this Proxon motor tool to twist the cables together. And here it is, ready to go. The cable's been cut from the drums. All I have to do is support the other end of the cable somewhere and switch on the drill at its slowest speed and the cables will be wound together, as you can see on screen. This ended up being quite a long length of cable, so I put the other end in the vise and walked away from the vise with the motor tool and then twisted it all together like this. After I'd done all that, I removed the twisted cables from the drill and the vise and by using my hand, I evened out the twist. I didn't want it twisted quite so tightly. And now it looks like this. It's ready to go. The cabling will run underneath the baseboard in a slot that I routed a while back. At each end, the cable will appear through a hole underneath each of the lamps, where it will be attached to electrical connectors. And while on the subject of that, I may as well show you what I'm going to do. These lamps are very old, and as you can see, the cable's not looking too healthy. It's solid core cable, so I have to be careful. I think these are Jensen lamps, and although they are old, and one of them is slightly damaged, they're going to look really nice on the plant. The first job is to shorten the cable slightly. I want to start off with a nice piece of tin copper wire. In England, these are called spade connectors. They may be called something else in other parts of the world. And I'm going to use these underneath the lamps for the positive connections. Although for this application, the polarity is unimportant. I cut the wire cleanly and then I stripped off some of the insulation to start with a new piece. I didn't want to risk stressing out this part. And as you can see, the insulation didn't strip off very cleanly. And here's a good idea when you're dealing with old cable. Use a small blowtorch to burn off the insulation. The next part of the job is to crimp a connector onto this wire. I repeated the process for the other lamp, and very shortly I ended up with two lamps with connectors on each of them. I fitted the other end of the connector just to show you what it's going to look like. Once all the connectors are fitted and wired, they will push up inside the base, and there won't be any stress on this very old cable in the centre at all. I'll be mounting these bases to the baseboard using only three bolts. The fourth bolt will be an electrical connection, which will take the negative or black wire. This should work out fine. All the bolts that hold the lamps to the base are going to be the same, which includes the one that's going to secure the negative connection. All I will need to do is use a couple of washers, one in each of the lamp bases, and solder the negative connection, which is the black wire, to each of them. This is a PM Research elbow, and these are very strange things. I really don't understand why they are different to the English standard, but such is life. The thread isn't tapered inside the elbow. The thread size is quarter by 40 threads per inch, but unfortunately the pitch is different between the British and United States standard. I need to persuade this internal thread in the cast elbow to fit a British steam union. And here's my box of quarter inch taps. I selected a correct one, quarter by 40 threads per inch. I fitted the tap into a tap wrench and held the other end of the elbow in my barco spanner. In no time at all, I thread one end of the elbow, then I turn it around to thread the other end. This is a very simple job and it's well worth doing it just to allow me to use these really nice PM Research cast elbows. And now I can fit the commercial British quarter by 40 threads per inch union adapter. 
And as always, to make sure it doesn't leak, I'm using Loctite 542 thread sealant. And after applying some of this to the joint, I screwed the union adapter firmly into the elbow. A washer is not required because it looks a little bit too big and clumsy. And besides, the Loctite 542 will ensure that this never leaks. I temporarily fitted a union nut and a union cone to protect the threads as I screwed the unit into position on the steam tap. The reason I wanted to fit this elbow to the steam tap is to make it easier to connect a pipe directly into the turret, or even fit one of my silicone rubber tubing pipe adapters, which will then make it very easy to pump some air into the boiler from a compressor, or operate an extra steam engine with the minimum of fuss. The working pressure is £60 per square inch, and this silicone rubber tubing that I use will easily cope with that. This job is now starting to reach its inevitable conclusion, but that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.